As soon as people started to work with wood, it was obvious that there was a need to be able to join timber in different ways for a range of purposes. A variety of useful joints evolved. The carpentry applications for these joints are mainly in house frame construction. The joinery applications include doors, windows, fittings and furniture. In the housing construction industry, these joints are often covered by wall linings and cladding. However, each joint needs to be made correctly, accurately and strongly to achieve its purpose. The corner halving joint is used to change direction in wall plates at corners. Another application is as a scarf joint used for lengthening wall plates. In setting out the corner halving joint, one of the two pieces to be joined is turned bottom side up. The width of the other member is marked along this underside and squared across the timber. A waste mark indicates the material that is to be removed. The top side of the other member is set out in the same way. These side marks are squared over halfway down both edges. Both members are turned face up. A marking gauge is set to half the thickness of the timber. Gauging from the top of both members ensures that what remains in one piece is removed as waste from the other to make a flush joint. Gauge lines can be made easier to see using a pencil. The waste is removed. Ripping with the grain is done first to avoid splitting. By ripping at an angle of 45 degrees, two set-out lines are visible to guide the saw. When the first 45 degree rip is made, the timber is turned and the process repeated, finishing the rip accurately with a vertical saw cut. The waste is removed by cross-cutting down to the rip. The process is repeated for the second member. The corner halving joint or scarf joint can now be assembled. The T halving joint and the cross halving joint are used when wall plates meet or intersect at right angles other than at corners. Setting out for both of these joints is done in a similar way to the corner halving joint. The new element in the T and cross halving joints is the forming of the trench. Saw cuts are made to the gauge lines. A centre cut in the waste makes it easier to remove, especially if the grain is difficult. Chiseling is done from the edge of the trench to the middle. The timber is turned and the chiseling is completed from the other edge to the middle of the trench. The trench is paired to a clean finish and tested for flat. The straight edge of the chisel is handy for this. The lap in the other member of the T-halving joint is made in the same way as for a corner-halving joint and the joint is assembled. Two opposed trenches make up the cross halving joint. The stopped halving joint is similar to the T halving joint but stronger because less timber is removed. Setting out is again done accurately, remembering to gauge from the top of both pieces. The lap is cut in one member. The stopped trench or recess is started with diagonal saw cuts to the gauge lines. A chisel is used to remove the bulk of the waste to the bottom of the saw cuts. Using a combination of vertical and sloping cuts, 
The shoulders of the recess are cut across the end grain down to the gauge line. The centre portion of waste is removed with vertical and horizontal cuts. The recess is tested for flat before the joint is assembled. The end lap housing joint and the through housing joint are used to check studs into wall plates. The stud thickness is measured and set out on the wall plate. This measurement can be traced from an offcut. The gauge is set to the depth of the amount of timber to be left on the plates. Gauging the amount to be left on accommodates any variation in the thickness of the top and bottom plates and allows all studs to be cut to the same length. Saw cuts are made to the gauge lines and the waste removed with a chisel. The trench is chiselled from both sides. The bottom of the joint is paired clean and tested for flat and the joint assembled. The side housing joint is used to let bracing and trimmers into wall framing. The width of the timber to be let in is transferred to the edge of the stud and the waste marked. This measurement is squared down the side of the stud. The gauge is set to the thickness of the piece to be let in and this depth is transferred to the stud. A centre cut in the waste makes it easier to remove. Chiselling is done from both edges of the trench to the middle. The bottom of the trench is paired to depth and tested for flat before assembly. In joinery construction, a high degree of accuracy in the fitting of joints is necessary. This is important because these joints are usually visible and on display. In setting out the through housing joint, the thickness of the timber is transferred to the job. This can be done by measurement 
or by transferring directly from the timber. This measurement is squared across the face and the waste marked clearly. A very sharp pencil is essential for accurate work. The width of the trench is squared down both edges. The gauge is set to the depth of the trench. Care should be taken not to gauge past the shoulder lines as this would spoil the finish. In joinery applications where accuracy is essential, a good way to start the shoulder cut is with a utility knife. This severs the wood fibres cleanly. By paring carefully down to the knife cut with a chisel, a guide is formed for the saw. This also lets the saw start without tearing the surface fibres. The saw is placed carefully in the guide and the shoulders cut. The saw cut should finish exactly on the gauge line. The waste is removed using a chisel slightly smaller than the width of the trench. The job is turned during chiselling so that cutting is always from the sides towards the middle of the trench. The final cuts to depth can be made by pairing or by using a hand router working from both ends of the trench to the centre. The router should not be used to remove the bulk of the waste but only to finish or bottom the trench. Before assembly it is important to test the bottom of the trench to make sure it is flat. The assembled joint displays the care and accuracy taken during its construction. The stopped housing joint is used in joinery for its appearance. The trench is hidden by being stopped short of the front of the job. A section matching the stop is removed from the other member. After using a utility knife and chisel to make saw guides on the shoulder of the trench, a small recess is chopped out next to the stop. This makes space for the tenon saw to work without damaging the face of the timber. The bulk of the waste is removed by chiselling. The trench is bottomed out with a hand router or by paring and testing for flat. The shoulder is cut carefully on the other member with a tenon saw and the waste removed. A comparison of the two types of housing joints displays the neater finish of the stopped housing joint. In constructing the corner halving joint, the width of one member is marked and squared on the face side of the other piece and the waist marked. The process is repeated on the bottom of the other member. In joinery, all pieces are marked with a face side and a face edge. All measurements and gauging are done from these reference surfaces. 
The gauge is set to half the thickness of the timber. Both pieces are gauged to depth from their face sides, even though waste is to be removed from the bottom of one of the pieces. The cheek of the cutout is ripped with the timber held at 45 degrees in a vise. This allows two guidelines to be followed while cutting. When a 45 degree rip to the cheek cutout line has been made, the timber is turned and the process repeated. The timber is then stood vertically in the vise and the saw cuts followed to complete the cheek cut. After pre-marking with a utility knife and a chisel, the waste is removed neatly at the shoulder using a tenon saw. The sawn surface of the cheek is paired flat. Care is taken that no waste is left in the internal corners to prevent the joint from taking up tightly. The T-halving joint is set out with all gauging done from the face sides. The cross-halving joint is set out in a similar way to the T-halving joint. Care should be taken not to overrun when gauging. Multiple saw cuts allow waste to be removed more easily. Chiseling is always done from the edge to the centre, turning the job in the vise as required. A choice can be made to bottom the trench using a hand router or by pairing with a chisel. A combination square is used to test for flat. The neatly finished halving joints are then assembled. The dovetailed T-halving joint is essentially the same as a standard T-halving joint except one member is cut in a dovetail shape and the other has a matching socket. The pitch or angle of the dovetail is one in four with the end of the tail being the full width of the timber. The socket is marked out by tracing the dovetail onto the other member and gauging to depth from the face side. Waste is removed using accurate saw cuts with an extra cut in the middle of the socket. As with all trenches, Chiseling is done from each side towards the centre. The dovetail acts to pull the joint up tight and hold it together. When the dovetail T-halving joint is assembled, the result is a neat, attractive joint.